My name is Don Morby. My position is Vice Chairman of the Technical Committee of the 17th Electrical Electronics Insulation Conference. Every conference, several papers are selected which it is felt would be of interest to universities and to the electrical industry in general. One of the papers is Establishment of a Computerized Online Comprehensive Database for Dielectric Materials by Dr. C. Ho, Dr. H. Lee, Dr. N. Singh. The paper will be presented by Dr. C. Ho. I'm going to report to you a computerized, comprehensive online intelligent database on dielectric materials that has been developed in our Center for Information and the Numerical Data Analysis and Physicists of Purdue University under the sponsorship of APRI. This database is under the direction of APRI project manager Mr. Phil Garcia. This is a comprehensive online interactive manual driven user friendly intelligent database. Our center has been in this uh, field of uh, data collection, data analysis, database development and uh, research on material properties in the past 28 years and we do nothing but data analysis and database development. In this database development we have also helped by many experts in dielectric materials including Dr. Thomas Dakin, Mr. Kenneth Mathis, Mr. To Orbeck, Mr. John Lapp, Dr. Fessler, Mr. Henry Pierce, and many others. Our presentation has two parts. The first part is a description and a discussion of the database for about 15 minutes. Then immediately follow by a demonstration by Dr. Lee of the actual online interactive search and the retrieval of the data. That will, through the long distance telephone hookup to the computer at Purdue University in West Lafayette, Indiana. So this is the actual direct database retrieval and the uh, data retrieval and the manipulation demonstration. This database on dielectric materials, this is a online interactive manual driven user friendly database. We call it intelligent database in a sense because a user he doesn't need to know anything about computer. He doesn't need to know any special languages of a computer, any particular search uh, command, and he can use the database himself directly. So we call it intelligent database. The purpose of this database Uh, several folds. One is, uh, for example, in a workshop on material specification and uh, characterization under Mr. Carl Ackerman, and he specified to develop, to design a DC computer, a DC motor used in high temperature. He has to know a lot of material properties and specifications. And uh, after he gives uh, all the requirements of the material, and then next question is uh, where to find such data for those materials. And if uh, the person doesn't know the material, then how does, 
how can he decide which material to use. This database we are developing is exactly to answer such question because one can search the database for data and information for any specified material in tabular and graphical form. Also, if he doesn't know the material, he can search the candidate material that meets a set of requirements specified by the user. This database contains both the experimental data and the critically evaluated data on the electrical, thermal, physical, optical, and the mechanical properties of the dielectric materials, and also contain many other technical data such as uh, flammability, toxicity, plasticity, and the commercial data as well as uh, application data. Then people like to know why we need such database. The first question can be answered is, dielectric materials are the backbone of the electrical utility industry because all the equipment used for the generation, transmission, distribution, and the utilization of electric energy, they must use electrical insulation. Electrical insulation material not only important also in a very large quantities in the United States. For example, in a typical large electrical utility company, they will use up to over 200 million pounds of uh, dielectric materials. And in the total United States, the total United States use for dielectric materials would be up to 36 billion pounds. Then second reason we need such a database is uh, the literature data scattered in the entire worldwide literature. And uh, no person can keep up with the literature. Next slide is a cartoon. We show you why this is so scary. In the, in the literature generation, it is so tremendously every year. No one can keep this up. And we would help people to keep up with literature. Actually, we read the literature for them and store the information for the user to use. The available literature worldwide is estimated, at least now the existing literature is over 60,000 documents. And every year, at least 3,000 more documents in this field in dielectric materials generated. And the cost of each research paper, it has been estimated at least $50,000. Therefore, 60,000 documents times $50,000, totally over $3 billion research is already invested. And we must, therefore, to recoup all the results. This is one reason we need such a database. Also, we point out the usefulness of a bibliographic database is very limited because they cannot provide you with explicit actual data, but just the potential source of data. And the engineers and the scientists really want data only. They don't want bibliography or the documents. Therefore, the establishment of a, such a computerized database would help to ensure the past, current, and the future research and the development results on dielectric materials be well organized and visible, highly reliable, 
and uh, directly usable, readily available, and uh, easily accessible, and uh, instantly retrievable. The potential advantage of the database, I have listed together totally 18 of them. This is a very long list. I, want to go, I, want to, I don't want to go through in detail. Then in the actual in the actual development of database, we involve at least six basic functions. One has to search the worldwide literature. One has to extract all the data from the literature and compile them, organize them. Then, because the literature data, many are erroneous, one has to also evaluate them analyze them and synthesize them to become the reliable data. Then one has to computerize both the raw data and the evaluate data together. This data together will be put inside the database together become the operational database. Then after that, then one has to keep updating, expanding to maintain such a database. In this computer, computer like database on dielectric materials, we cover the following 13 category of data, including thermal property, electrical property, physical property, chemical property, optical property, mechanical property, and many, many other technical data, and also the commercial data and the application data. For example, include the producers, suppliers, availability, and the range of cost. So far, we have created 11 data files for this database. These 11 data files stored in the database, the operation is very complicated. Next figure, we show the operational scheme of the computer database. I don't want to go to in detail because you don't have enough time. So next slide would explain all the, all the notations used in the previous figure. The next slide will show the data search and the retrieval scheme. This also is very complicated, we no time to explain uh, to everybody. But next slide will show the notations used in the previous figure. The flow chart for this database operation will be shown in this uh, uh, figure. This includes the interaction between the user and the computer and the step-by-step -step how he can search, retrieval, display, manipulation the data, shown in this uh, operational chart. Then this database is uh, continuously being expanded and uh, updated so that eventually it should include all the important data and the information on dielectric materials. Thank you. Dr. Ho, just to give you uh, a pretty good overview of the system, uh, the every database, uh, what I'm going to show you is how the database uh, is working. For the time being, as you can see from this desk, is a terminal, and the terminal is uh, connected to the host computer at the Purdue University through a modem. <coughs> the modem is uh, uh, can uh, the, the option of the modem you can use a 1200 baud rate or 300 baud rate uh, as of your choice, whatever uh, is available to you. And as I, uh, Dr. Ho indicated earlier, the system is very user friendly, and the user uh, does not have to know the computer language or anything specific about the computer. But a user 
has to know his field, what kind of terminology in his field, and uh, what to be uh, retrieved, what, you, uh, what is going to uh, be retrieved, and uh, what is going to be getting out from the system. Now let's uh, uh, come to the terminal and start the search. Uh, Dr. Ho just uh, finished uh, the overview of the database. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate uh, how the database uh, can be accessed and searched to retrieve the data uh, the, uh, according to your specification. There are two stages uh, to access the database. First one, of course, uh, you have to access to uh, the host computer of the database. And uh, the second stage, uh, you uh, access to the database itself. Uh, each stage has a different uh, identification and a password. Uh, the terminal now is already uh, accessed to the computer. I'm going to show you uh, the second stage to access the, uh, the database. A user, at his place, he can, uh, what he, all, all he has to do is uh, to execute a program called xmain. I'm, I'm going to show you how it looks like. Okay, that's all the user has to do to execute this program. And once the program is executed, the system will ask you uh, identification to access to the database itself. As you can see from the screen, uh, you have to enter your identification. Okay, in this case, uh, Mr. Garcia, the name will be used uh, to enter this database. And after that, a password has to be entered. If everything is correct, then the database will welcome you to this particular database. And uh, some other information, uh, how can you contact the, uh, the manager of the project and uh, the director of the data center? The telephone number and so on, then, and also some kind of uh, uh, some information uh, to inform the user. Uh, don't afraid of the uh, mistakes he make. And the user, the system is so user friendly, and keep on asking questions until the user uh, input the right information. Now, for this case, uh, the system asks you type a P to proceed. A user-friendly system usually has to be a menu-driven system. As you can see from this screen, uh, the main menu contains uh, several possible possibilities uh, you, can, uh, you can do. Uh, for this particular demonstration, I'm going to show you number three and four. And these two options are actually will be most use, mostly used by uh, the users. Okay, now your, your selection, let's pick up number three for the time being. And uh, as you know very well, in order to search uh, the data, you have to tell the system what material you are interested in, what property you are interested in, and uh, the other independent parameters you, uh, the data is supposed to uh, depend on. Now, the first stage, as you can see, is specifying uh, the material. Now here is uh, another thing, the goodness of the database. Uh, you don't have to, as a user, you don't have to uh, enter a code. Uh, generally, it's in the user's menu. But uh, you don't have to remember the code. All you have to do is uh, remember part of the name. Uh, you don't have to remember exactly how the name spell, you see, just a part of it. Uh, for instance, uh, a material name which you probably cannot remember clearly, but you know there is a, uh, this name is called some kind of oil, for instance. And all you remember is oil, and the rest of them you don't know is exactly exact the spelling of it. So at this time, all you need to do is oil as the input. And the system will search all the names which contain this particular uh, segment and display it for your choice. As you can see from the screen, uh, it has uh, 24 uh, hits. And each 
of the name contains the, uh, the, the root oil, you see. Okay, now, from this list, uh, I will pick up number 14, the first choice. The order of number is immaterial. You can randomly pick the number uh, of your preference, you see. Number one, for instance, this time, and then number 16 is the next choice. Okay, now, you finish the, the selection from this first table, and you can have other name. And uh, this time, I remember the name uh, has the word, uh, has the, the letters M-I-D-E-L. Now, this is a very good uh, material, uh, but the user has no nothing other than the three, uh, five letters. Okay, the system responds to you for two names. And I know very well the first one is uh, transformer oil, the second one is capacitor oil. Now let's pick up both of them. As I said earlier, uh, the number of your selection is in material. You can pick up a number two first and one later. The finished. More materials and uh, you have to type no to finish this selection. Otherwise the system will take your input as a name and keep on searching, of course. This, uh, if your, uh, your input name uh, cannot be found from the system, it, the system will tell you uh, it cannot be found. Okay, now, uh, let's see. This time, let's say finish, say no. Now, the second stage is to specify the property. Again, all you need to do uh, is enter the name of the property rather than the code. Uh, power factor is a very common property of the electrics. And uh, let me input this uh, particular section to it. Okay. Now you can see uh, power factor is the only one found uh, in the system. Okay. Number one is the selection. You see, the property is different from material. For property, it has a, a range of values. So over this time, uh, at this time, it gives you a chance to specify the range of the property. Uh, let's say yes. This time I want to uh, specify the range. And uh, as you know very well, the power factor, the lowest power factor is zero. And uh, so I enter zero. The, next, the highest is 1.0, but let's give a, a little bit of play with it. Let's say 0 0.1 is the highest value of my selection. Okay, new property name, yes. Uh, I'm interested in to find resistivity. Okay, all I need to do is just a part of the, the name. Okay, you have two things. One is resistivity itself. The second one is a, a PCB residue. And uh, of course, the number one is uh, of my interest. Okay, again, it asks you a question whether you want to uh, uh, specify the range or not. Uh, let's save time, say no. Uh, since you have two entries here, you pick up the first one and specify the range, and it's still asking you as a number will be picked up or not. Uh, say no, so finished. Now, and again, it asks you, keep on asking you a question until you finish your input. Uh, Let's say, this time I'm interested in dielectric constant. And, uh, okay, there are five names meet your uh, uh, requirement. requirement. Now let's pick up the first one, dielectric constant, uh, as the choice. Again, it asks you range, no. And that's all I need, finished. <clears throat>